to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, my name is Chrisom, and I would like to welcome you to this program. Joining me today, once again, we are so blessed and we are so fortunate to have Julia Rainier here. And say hello, Julia. Hi, everybody. I hope you could hear that. She seems kind of soft-spoken when it comes to the radio. And I would like to also welcome the Queen... I should say the Celtic queen of questionable comfort, Her Holiness, Amelia Santara. Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good to be here. Hello, Julia. I hear you very well. Um, it's good to be here, Chris. I'm looking forward to the show. Um, I begin, as I always do, by letting listeners know where they can go if they would like to make a donation. The place is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the upper right-hand corner, you will see the donate button. And as I always say, it's very easy to follow the instructions after that. If anybody is interested in making a donation in some other way, then they can get in contact with me at kundalini matters at gmail.com and I can let them know um, how to make a donation through the bank. Again, we always say every week that there is, you know, no absolute requirement, there's no expectation on anybody to make a donation. I simply give this information because people um, want to know where they can give a donation to help support the work that Chrism does. This is Chrism's full-time work. He works at this all the time, um, except when he sleeps. And so, yes, donations are necessary. Um, So people who are in a position to do that and people who want to do that, donations are very, very welcome indeed. So you can go again. I'll tell you again. It's Ascension, www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And if you don't have a bio and you just Google um, Ascension Kundalini Blogspot, you will get the address that way. So that's it, Chrism. Though that's the only notification I have, and um, looking forward to the show. I have some questions as well. If you want to ask them later on. Well, it's interesting. Uh, once again, um, uh, welcome to everyone. It looks like we might be having another sound problem. Uh, oh, no. People in the forum, people aren't being able to hear. So uh, MJ and Fast G and Elizabeth and anybody else. Uh, let us know if you would. I'll type a message because they obviously can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Two minutes, let me go do that. Okay, very good. So, even though they may not be able to hear what we're saying, they, the blog talk is still recording. And so, I just want to say to everyone out there, uh, especially for those of you listening in the archives, <clears throat> and listening uh, on your computer, uh, yeah, it, it's it's recording. And so here we go. Uh, Kundalini can bring about uh, very, very specific changes in a person's temperament. Uh, you can go from zero to infuriated in less than a nanosecond. And it's very important for you to understand the the level of emotional balance that it takes uh, for people to have Kundalini without flying off the handle, uh, as I'm as I drive around the country with Julia in the car, you know, the the Kundalini will come up with certain levels of testing for her to go through w- with regards to an emotional content. How do you handle somebody who's directly challenging you? How do you handle uh, someone who's challenging you and say not the best way? Uh, this is a very very important aspect because it will. It can it can engineer how you are heard and how you hear yourself within the context of just communication with your family, your friends, your job, 
perfect strangers. You need to understand that the kundalini is amplifying not just your physical body, but also the emotional body and the mental body and the spiritual body and the egoic or the psychological body. So it's very important for you to understand how to temper your emotional drives, your emotional content. And and I got to say that this is not this is not something that we learn so well in the west, in the western uh technological countries. Uh you know, of course we learn from our parents at home, don't hit don't hit your sister, don't hit your friend, don't don't be rude or things like that. But once we get past the age of 12 or once once perhaps we leave the the nest or the home, uh, we're basically, you know, allowed to express ourselves any way we wish. And if we haven't received the information very well as a child, then we're certainly going to be expressing along the lines of, of, of childish behavior, uh, you know, in our in our young adults, let's say in our late teens and 20s. And if the kundalini comes up uh, during that time period, which it sometimes does for people, it's very, very important to be able to to regain emotional stability while you're having the kundalini. And, and even as an adult, and let's just say that you were raised well and, and, and uh, you, you learned how important it is to be polite and to have manners and to treat people well and be kind and considerate and listening. Uh, when the kundalini comes and you get that spike in your emotional body, well, you're not prepared for that. You're not prepared for having such a hot emotional trigger to any kind of a, of a uh, interaction that involves your emotions. And so be very, very, very aware of this as you go into your kundalini. For those of you that are looking at kundalini, look at your emotional balances as much as you look for the physical phenomena that will accompany the kundalini because it's not to be taken lightly. Your emotions in many ways can, can rule your your kundalini experience and if your emotions you know go bad on you <laughs> when your if your emotions go bad on you then it doesn't really your your enjoyment of the physical phenomena goes right out the window so really really pay attention to your emotional responses inside the kundalini i don't care if you're a politician running for office you know that's just you know that kind of a star chamber is all about having emotional control and, and learning how to get your point of view across without, uh, you know, going into, say, a 12-year-old mentality. Uh, or if you're a boss at a big company, you know, just because you're at the top doesn't mean you can be an emotional idiot. You know I'm talking to you. Now, watch your emotions. <laughs> the scenario is, the emotions are very, very uh, essential and a very, very key ingredient to having the uh, the kundalini in a, in a safe and balanced way. You really need to understand that. Get your head around that. Get your heart around that. And begin to self-modulate how you respond emotionally to anyone. Okay. Um, do you always have to be right? Uh Oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, guest number, oh, that's a long number, 11677492. They're telling me that I can be heard all right. And thank you very much for that for that confirmation. It's very, very nice of you. Uh, so, so, you know, do you always have to be right? How do you feel when someone contradicts you? How do you feel? And what does, how does that amplification the Kundalini brings, how does that make you feel even more? along an emotional line of, of understanding. So it's very important for you to begin to take stock of that. You know, um, with Kundalini people, it's very easy to fly off into a rage, uh, you know, uh, you know, on the freeway or, or because, uh, you know, your country's leaders aren't taking you in a, in a, in a direction that is healthy, you know, like here in the United States, uh, it can get you very, very, you know, riled up. And I want you to really just take a breath through your nose. Take a deep breath through your nose about three times and just let the tension go. Let yourself relax. 
you know, you don't need the high blood pressure. You don't need the elevated heart rate just because, you know, this is a new area of emotional exploration for you to have. It's, it's absolutely natural. The emotions really, you know, this is where your compassion comes from. This is where your consideration comes from. This is where the blessings of love are emanated into those around you. This has a very strong uh, influence on the quality of your kundalini radiance. Remember that I've spoken in other shows, this, this almost a mile circular square footprint that a kundalini, awakened kundalini radiance can cover. All of the living beings within that radiance will feel the quality of that radiance. And that includes the plants, the microbes, the fungi, the people, the animals, the insects, the birds, the fish, the, everything. Everything and and even even qualities of consciousness that we have yet to discover as being actual creations because we can't measure it, such as uh, those that are in the in the air and in the sky around us. And so, you know, I can't speak highly enough about how important it is to have emotional stability while you're having the kundalini and. and uh, Remember, you may have had a hard time of it as a kid. You may have been, uh, you may have been abused physically, sexually, emotionally, mentally. I mean, you may have suffered all kinds of different levels of abuse. Certainly within the within the realm of karmic uh, balancing, and and some of these trigger points may still be very very hot button issues with you. Uh, certainly with, uh, you know, if you were really really traumatized as a kid, you know you. You're compartmentalizing your soul in a, in a shamanic term. You have a, a soul fracture uh, that, that is, you know, it's causing a disturbance in your energetic understanding of how you are. And so once again, you need to go in there and you need to find that, that, that child that you were. You need to, to bring that child back into a harmonic convergence, shall we say, with your kundalini radiance. And one of the ways you do this one of the ways you do this is you go into a meditation, and if you're going to use a shamanic journeying point, you'll you'll look. So you, I'm just going to give you this this technique right off the bat. You go into meditation, a soft, gentle meditation. Imagine that you're sitting on a log somewhere. It can be in a meadow. It can be on on the beach. It can be in a desert. It can be in your backyard. And I want you to turn when you get the feeling. You'll you'll get the feeling, and you'll turn. To your left, you'll turn to your left, and you'll just look at the first animal that you see there. I don't care if it's a grasshopper, a praying mantis, a jackrabbit, a deer, a tiger, a wolf, orca, heron, eagle, doesn't matter. That is the spirit animal that can help you uh, find uh, your soul fragment. And as you find, as you see that animal, just say, I, you know, because I have lost you here, I'll just say, you know, I see Lasha over there. So Lasha becomes my spirit animal in, a, in, in the shamanic quest to retrieve a, uh, a, uh, a soul fracture. So I, I ask Lasha, I say, Lasha, go into the three worlds, the world of the heavens, the world of, of the treasures, and the world of, of the, the lower world. So basically, you have a trinity of worlds, and hello, trinity, kundalini, it goes right there with us. The shamanism and kundalini go hand in hand. Uh, so I'd say, Lasha, Lasha, uh, please find my soul fragment. Please find, <laughs> not quite getting what that is you're saying there, but okay. Please find the part of me that is, that is causing emotional imbalance uh, uh, from any time in my previous existence. And and Lasha will basically bring that soul, that soul up. It will, it'll, she'll either bring that soul up or she'll take you to where that soul is. And then you have to coax that, that child fragment uh, to you and, 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 and let it know that it's safe and let it know that it's loved and let it know that the abuse that it had will not be repeated and that it's okay to come back and rejoin the whole body as a as a an accepted working member of that whole body, 
And, uh, and when you do that, boom, that soul fragment has been rejoined with your energetic anatomy. It's very, very important for people to do this. Now, you don't need a shaman to do this. Now, if you're possessed with entities, that's going to be a different kind of a problem for you, and, and I'll get into that in a second. But if you're just beginning to come into the Kundalini, if you're just beginning to look at uh, where your emotional blockages may be with regards to having an amplified emotional body, uh, it's very important for you to to look into this. And this is a this is a self psychological uh, uh, healing modality that you can use sitting right there in your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, your office, your desk, your car, wherever you're hearing this. You can just go into that soft meditation, wait, and, and you'll just kind of get the feeling when to turn your head to the left. To the left. And then whatever animal you see there, and it won't be a person. If you see a person, that's, that's more of an entity interference. You just want to ignore that. Whatever animal you see, I don't care if it's a snail, a slug, an ant, you know, these creatures do not have the same meaning in this state as they do uh, uh, in a terrestrial or, 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 or worldly way. Okay, so you turn your head, you look at that animal. I see Lasha. Um, and then you ask Lasha to find a soul fragment that is blocking your emotional uh, balance right now in your lifetime right now. And then she'll either take you to that soul fragment and, and uh, that soul fragment, you can question, you can, you know, what happened to you? Oh, I see. Oh, my gosh. You know, well, that's not going to happen to you anymore. I want you to know that I love you, that I will take care of you, that you're safe with me. Do not be afraid open and, and, and come come into us and let us be friends again and let us be together again. And, and uh, once that happens, once that rejoining occurs, uh, you'll find in most cases that the blockage that, uh, that has accompanied you throughout your entire life is now gone. And the Kundalini will fill in those blank spaces with its own grace. And, uh, and you will once again have balance within, within that measure of your emotional uh, anatomy. So, so take, take this advice. Take this clearly. This is very, very basic uh, soul retrieval technique. It's, you, know, and the, you know, a lot of people go, oh, gosh, i got to pay the shaman $1,000 in order to... That was not me, and I have not eaten at Taco Bell, I swear. <laughs> That's some guy on a motorcycle running by here. Okay, so, oh, what was I saying with with that grounding? Um, yeah, this you don't need to pay a shaman a thousand dollars to do this. Uh, you don't need to to uh, pay anybody to do this. This is something you can do for yourself. Granted, you know the the shaman might give you some tobacco smoke and some sage and rattles and you know put you in a teepee or some sort of a hut. You know that. You know, the surroundings might help you. And if that helps you, fine. That's all good. Also, if you're taking ayahuasca, ayahuasca will also identify these areas for you, uh, taking you to these areas of blockage where you can find resolution. Uh, another possibility is just if you already have the kundalini flowing, you can just ask the kundalini. And in many ways, you can just go into levels of forgiveness. You forgive those who committed abuse against you, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse mental abuse, any of the abuses that many, many children uh, encounter, uh, you can go into, into the kundalini itself and ask it to, to help you unblock that abusive, that abusive blockage. Now, if you have any questions about this, I have to tell you that this is, this, today's show is going to be an abbreviated show because I have to pack for Minnesota. I'm leaving for Minnesota tomorrow at 5 in the morning. And so... Julie and I have a lot of packing to do, and, uh, and so this will be an hour show, and, and my apologies to anybody that was hoping it, that, it, that it might be a longer show. I apologize, but I, I do have to, to, to get my gear together. Um, if you would like to talk about this, uh, please call in, area code 347-934-0026. Uh, just a quick a quick aside here. Anybody that wants more information, you can go to the YouTube channel, 
chrisum.kundalini, and that'll give you all of our 300 videos on YouTube. You can also go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, that's the number one, dot com. You can go on to the Yahoo network, and it's Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups. Uh, dot com, and then we can also be found on Facebook at Kundalini Awakening exclamation point and Kundalini Awakening Systems Two or Three, uh, Kundalini Healing. Yes, <laughs> Kundalini Healing, and then we are also on Google Plus, I believe they call it, which I don't know how to operate, but I'll, I'm. I'm yeah, Google Plus. We have a group there, and we, we can also be reached there. So any any of these areas that people need to explore with regards to their kundalini, I remember in my early process, I couldn't find any information about the kundalini. This is my kundalini is really what sculpted my mission in life. Uh, you know, when I, when I awoke, uh, first of all, I came into this body with pre-awakened from another lifetime of having kundalini. But that doesn't mean you get to remember the lifetime like many people think. That just means that you come in and you have kundalini phenomena and you don't know why. Okay, it, it, And that phenomena will drive you towards the second awakening, at least for the soul, but maybe the first awakening for that flesh body. And so when the flesh body was awakened at the age of 30, I had no clue what was going on. I mean, I, I remember my childhood and I got a lot of this, you know, this, the phenomena symptoms from my childhood. And that was okay. You know, I, I, I learned to get used to that, but you know, the snake being in the spine, you know, your spine turning into a serpent, seeing all these serpents around you, having serpents, uh, you know, land on your feet or butterflies land on your shoulders or birds land on your hand. And that was just kind of weird. I mean, great. I loved it. You know, I felt very honored and blessed, but I couldn't find any information about this back then. There was no internet and cell phones were still new, if that tells you how old I am. Uh, so, you know, my 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 course in life got shifted from from where it was to where it is right now. And that shift has been towards giving people uh, honest, clear uh, integrity-based information about the Kundalini awakening without the baggage of religion, you know, without the baggage of a, a you know, any kind of a specific belief system. Because one, as I said in other in other uh, programs, where the where religions end, that's where Kundalini begins. And I know, but some of you who are interested in the Vedic areas, uh, that's a little harder because the Vedic does include uh, opinions about the kundalini, but not within a Western civilization context. And this is where it can really go wrong. You know, it, it almost seems like you have to become a Hindu in order to understand Vedic-based information systems about the kundalini. And, and I'm telling you right now, you don't. You know, I'm sitting here in Northern California with a beautiful, lovely Julia Rainier from Minnesota, you know, she's got a Tibetan Buddhism background, but she's also got a Christian background. None of them are Hindu based. You know, she gets a Shakti pot at our at our at the seminar we did in 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 Minnesota last time, and all of a sudden she starts chanting Hindu chants. So you know where she was before this body. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just the Vedic information is good, but it's not the only source of information. For instance, the Taoist in China really understand uh, the kundalini. They they understand it, but they don't understand it to the point where they can really ascend with it. They they try to control it at every step of the way. And once again, you know, I'm 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 far more uh I feel it's far more productive to surrender your life to the kundalini and let the divine guide you as I have let it guide me into into what the new life choices can bring for you. Uh, if you'd like to talk about this, I'd like to talk with you about this. The number is 347-934-0026. And if Her Holiness, the greatness of Ireland, the I in the Ireland, the R in the Ireland, if Her Holiness would come on board, I believe she has some questions that, that she would like to ask. Uh, or she could be sitting on the toilet at this moment. Ah! <laughs> 
Did you, did you write? <laughs> just got back. Just got back. No, no. And um, uh, yes, I have. I have a few questions for them. And um, two have been written in that are not as a group. So one of them is: people talk about the light of Christ. Is there any connection between this and Kundalini? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I, uh, just a little while ago, I had a, uh, one of my French students with me, uh, Magdalene de Deus, and uh, we were traveling all over the country. We were traveling overseas, and she was doing, you know, very similar to what Julia is doing right now. And and we visited inadvertently. I, I had to get a T-shirt uh, for for. Uh, the kids of, of, of one of my students. And, and uh, so I was, I was, I, I, we were there in San Francisco. Uh, we had just got off the Mason street cable car, you know, rice Roni, the San Francisco, that, that cable car. And uh, we were walking towards the wharf and it was kind of a dark, kind of a dark area. And I would not have allowed her to walk there alone uh, but I was there, and so I didn't see any problem with it. And, and we crossed the street to a corner, and all of a sudden, a figure emerges from the from the corner and confronts us. And, oh, I'm going to get bliss. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, wow. Wow. It, it's hard to talk about this without going into bliss. And I can't talk when I'm in bliss. <laughs> Maybe I should talk about this. A figure came up, and it was Christ. It was the Christ. And uh, Magdalene was immediately instructed to get onto her knees and to give give a gift uh, to this figure from her hand to its hand. And, and she did, and, and it was very, very... It was a beautiful, beautiful, amazingly gorgeous. As I can't tell you how strong a moment it was. Uh, but it wasn't strong in the way that you would think because the Christ the Christ doesn't come in all lit up and, you know, fluorescent and, you know, f- surrounded by 21 angels that are like little kids, you know, it's just like, Christ just kind of shows up looking like a regular person, but you can feel the energetic signature of this being. And, and oh, hang on. I shouldn't talk about these things because I just can't. Okay. <sighs> anyway, so, so yeah, the light of Christ is basically the radiance of the kundalini that is around kundalini people. It's just a stronger form. Christ wants everyone to have their kundalini awakened. Uh, Ask uh, uh, ask St. Teresa of Avila. Ask St. John of the Cross. Ask St. Francis of Easy. Ask St. Hildegard of Bingham. You know, these people all saw Christ that way. Okay, Christ is not in our in our modern, shall we say, modern in our different uh, uh, time zone in our in our different level of uh, physical manifestation of what we call technology. At at our core, we are still beings that are searching to discover our own divinity, and this is what the Christ wants to see happen. This is not the first time. Christ has has exposed itself to my to any of my students. It, it happens again and again, and it's still it's very it's it's the same level of power over and over and over and over. It's just like it happened the first time. Anyway, so the 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 light of the Christ is a is a big deal. It is that light of God. It is that light of grace. A lot of people go, oh well, is that the Holy Ghost? Well, I, you know. There are so many different definitions of the Holy Ghost. You pick one. But I can tell you that the light that emanates from the radiance of Christ is both visible and in the invisible spectrum or the non-visible uh, visible spectrum. Uh, it is both seen and felt and experienced in 
layers of of duality and non-duality at the same time. And I know that doesn't make sense to people who don't understand walking the edge of the Tao. Okay, but Christ is of this time and not of this time. Uh, Christ, the Christ force itself, is an amazingly beautiful force that has been so completely misunderstood by the many, uh, by the many, uh, <laughs> Fasci, I'm going to read what Fasci just wrote on the chat room. He goes, Chrisom, I would like you not to project so much bliss. I'm having a hard time over here. <laughs> Blessings to you, Fasci, and anybody else that may be having the bliss. It's really strong. It's really strong. Um, yeah, the Christ force has been clearly misunderstood uh, by the, the many different denominations of Christianity and by the ne- many different uh, uh, interpretations and, and uh, uh, personal agendas that have been injected into the teachings of the Christ. And so, but the Christ light really is all about the Kundalini. It is the same level of radiance that Santara has, that that Vashti has, that I have, that Julia has, that Magdalene has, that uh, Elizabeth, Dalton Gonzalez, M.J. Henderson, everybody that has a Kundalini has a level of Christ light around them. You, you don't have to call it the Christ light, though. The Christ is not all about, oh, you must exalt me, or, oh, you know, uh, Christ isn't really out. You know, he, Christ is not about uh, 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 self-aggrandizement. That's what people do to him. Christ doesn't need that. Only people need that. Uh, but the same thing with the Buddhic, with with Buddha. Buddha will come to people that way. Zoroastria will come to people that way. Some of the Egyptian gods and goddesses will come to people that way. Uh, uh, the White Tara will come to people that way. Green Tara will come to people that way. Uh, you know, this this is the way that the divine teaches us to come into itself. It will make these these appearances. And you just don't want to make the mistake that, that most people in the United States will make is going, oh, that's just my imagination. That wasn't real. Because I'll tell you what, your imagination is real. And you'll know that. Those of you that have Kundalini know that the imagination basically is 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 surfing the astral, surfing other layers of of existence that we can partake of, but because of our our our, our mistaken programming, uh, we're not allowed to partake of that. Okay, so yeah, the Christ light is a real thing, and it's as real as the Kundalini light. When Julia looks at me, and she said this more than once, she sees all kinds of light coming from Is that right? That's absolutely true. Can, can they hear that? Can you hear that, Amelia? She's yes, Susan, so, so, I heard that. Ah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. So, so it is a real thing. Radiance is a real thing, and it's very important for people to understand that. It is not only seen, it is felt. It is not only felt, it is known. It is understood. Maybe not by the mental mind or the ego mind, but every other aspect of your uh, of your five-body system understands it. Next question, my dear. Mm, thank you, Prism. Next question. Um, I read on the group that many people dream of you, Chrism. Why does that happen? Do you actually travel to these people as they sleep? Well, you know, sometimes people get nightmares. That's all I can say. (laughs) (laughs) True. Um, What it is, is that the exalted aspect of my kundalini that travels to these people Fasci and I were talking about this earlier in a conversation, and he said it's your high self, and and you know I won't disagree with that because it is it is an aspect of chrism that is that is speaking right now, but not speaking right now. Kundalini is is multi how do I say multi uh, I'm not sure that makes any sense to anybody. It it can be in 
in a billion places at the same time. And it will come to you in the form that it wants you to learn from. So when people are dreaming of chrism, that's because the kundalini is, is, is injecting chrism into their consciousness so that they can learn from what they're being exposed to in their waking life. It's, a, it, it's also a form of permission. Uh, if you're, if, like I have perfect strangers, you know, they, they call me up, they say, I've been having dreams about you and I've been told in my dreams that I need to be your student or that you need to be my teacher and, and I want to know if I may have permission to do that. And of course, you know, when I hear that, I understand what's going on with them and so of course they, they become the student. But the scenario is this is happening over and over and over again. And this also happens with these seminars. People dream of a seminar advertisement that I'll put in a New Age magazine or something like that before it's been put in the New Age advertisement. They say, I understand you're having uh, a seminar at such and such. And, and I go, well, how do you know that? I haven't even put it in the magazine yet. Well, I was dreaming about it. So, it, no, no. I don't astral project, and yes, I astral project. The person that, you, that is speaking into these microphones right now does not astral project. I mean, I can, don't get me wrong, I can astral project anytime I want, but I don't astral project to each and every individual that is dreaming. That is the kundalini in me that is doing that. And that should tell you about the, the wide... Uh, what's the word, the wide horizon of possibility that Kundalini has. Uh, there is nothing impossible for divine radiance or divine consciousness to do. I don't need to know that person, but it will know that person. It, it's, it's almost like uh, uh, within a population of 9 billion, uh, certain flags are, are recognized in the consciousness of people. And when a certain frequency of flag comes up over a certain person, that kundalini, the, 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 the divine consciousness knows that that person is coming into kundalini and it needs, and it starts to direct that person. It starts to teach that person. It starts to guide that person to where they can get knowledge that is going to help them on their path. And so this is happening. This is happening a lot. This is happening lately. Um, it happens all the time. And in many cases, it's an indication for the person to become that personal private student of Christendom. For many, many, that, that is the case. And whether they do that or not is strictly up to them. You know, some of them, you know, they don't, they, you know their, their ego may be too strong at that point. For them to go, oh, my gosh, I need a teacher. I know that when I was early on in my practice, you know, I was, there's no way I was going to get a teacher. Oh, my gosh, a teacher? Teacher what? How can they know me better than I know myself? There you go. There's the blueprints <laughs> of the ego. Do I hear you laughing in there, Centaur? <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I'm recognizing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I damn didn't realize people. I was in the red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need no teacher to tell me what to do. The <laughs> last thing I need all the corrupt evangelists. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, I mean, like like in my early process, you know, there's no way I would have been able to hear that, but I remember it later on in my process. I remember it and go, well geez, maybe that Christian guy, you know, I can at least check him out, see what he looks like at least, you know. I can, if he's got a long beard and a blue pickup truck, though, forget it. <laughs> so, so the scenario uh, with that is that, yes, I do astral project to people every night, and no, I do not astral project to people every night. But I'll tell you what, it gets done. <laughs> Next question. Thank you. Okay, why does Kundalini cause so much pain if it is a loving force? It's not so much the Kundalini that's causing pain. It's it's the person's resistance to it that is causing pain. And and actually, in the early aspect of the awakening, the 
excuse me, the activation, uh, even the 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 physical system itself is not used to having such tremendous levels of of energy pushed through the cellular structures, and even that can cause you know a level of, of physical discomfort. Uh, ask a child, ask a two year old. Uh, well, you know the two year old is asking mom, how come? If teeth are so good, how come they hurt so hard when they're coming in? Can you answer that for me, Julia? If teeth are so good, how come they hurt so much when they're coming in? Because the body's not used to that. Because the body's not used to that. And neither, you know, and, and the kundalini is even far more powerful than, than a person that's going into teething. Uh you know, the, the kundalini at first can be painful. Not always, though. I guess I have to say, I mean, it didn't cause me a lot of pain. It caused me a lot of mental concern, a lot of emotional concern, a lot of psychological concern. But I didn't get a lot of physical pain. I just got a lot of physical phenomena. When I say, you know, what I, I mentioned before, having the spine turn into a serpent and having it kind of like, you know, you're, you you undulate back and forth, right to left, like a ser- serpent does. Doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt at all. Doesn't hurt to have a butterfly land on you. Doesn't hurt to have a wasp land on you. Say hello and fly away. Wasps are telepathic, by the way. They can actually do that. Um, you know, it, it doesn't hurt, but sometimes it does hurt. If a person has it, one of the reasons why yoga is so, so very beneficial is because it prepares the body to have physical kriyas that the kundalini will bring about, which is why when you wake up in the middle of the night and you're doing downward dog or, or upward cow or whatever, you know, what? <laughs> sorry, <laughs> downward dog. Anyway, a <laughs> little bit of bliss here. <laughs> sorry. That you find yourself waking up in the middle of doing some yoga position, well, that's because yoga was designed uh, by people wanting to have the kundalini as an expression of people having kundalini. Oh, it looks like we have a we have a questioner. So yay! And I'd like to in, invite anybody else that has a question to call three four seven nine three four zero zero two six and uh, Santar, if you would hover you know when that person is ready to uh, to ask the question uh the yoga any of the yoga systems whether it's kundalini yoga which takes takes its clue kundalini yoga takes two two very very important clues from the awakened kundalini from whence it came meaning meaning the uh the people that practice kundalini yoga well that yoga itself was designed uh, from the observation of a person going into kundalini, having the actual symptoms of kundalini awakening, uh, and so so as the as the the yoga is observed, well, since that's coming straight from the kundalini, and these are these people are using it, you know, for the most part ineffectually to activate their kundalini. It doesn't negate the the quality of the yoga itself. So the person that is having kundalini, uh, if you start to adopt that yoga, that hatha yoga, kundalini yoga, raja yoga, bhakti yoga, uh, any of these types of yogas, uh, it will be beneficial to you because it is an expression of kundalini. It's an expression of the kundalini. Uh, Santara, your holiness, yes. Would you come on, please? Yes, I'm here. We have a question. We do from Fashti. Would you be, would you be hovering? Oh, it's oh, Fashti. Fashti. <laughs> <laughs> well, you definitely want to hover there. over that guy. I tell you what. <laughs> I'm pushing him on now. <laughs> hovering. <laughs> okay. okay, watch it. <laughs> Your finger. <laughs> Master, it is so nice to see to hear you here. Hello, hello. Hi, Master. Um, I, 
<laughs> I was listening to you, and um, I, I heard uh, from the Kundalini an insight uh, as to why people experience this, um, this this thing of pain. And I recall you speaking of levels of density, and I wanted to to just point that out that the Kundalini is such a in a pure state of consciousness that when it enters uh, into the individual uh, that may be uh, actually going through this experience of pain, uh, it is just clearing the way. Uh, Because when, you know, it's just sort of like um, a fish that might be swimming in dirty water and actually go into pure water. Uh, There are going to be some, some effects on the fish in order to become accustomed to this much more pure water that it's swimming in. And, and and I guess that's a fairly good analogy of what happens when the kundalini comes into our lives. Um, it has to clear away a lot of the, the garbage and trash that we have from uh, the programming that we receive from um, our parents, our teachers, those that we, we hold dear to us. Uh, and we respect their opinions. Well, the Kundalini has to work through all of this in order to uh, establish a, a, a firm base in us. And so it may cause some measure of pain, but that pain is, is not something that will last forever. It is something that is almost like the detox experience that a lot of us go through when we're receiving Shaktipat from you. Um, I'm going to be quiet here for a moment and let you speak, Master. Oh, I, I think you're, I think you're, you're right on target with this. Uh, I think there is a lot of detox that happens, certainly in, in preparation towards the Shakti pot, like with the scatter field. Uh, Absolutely, a lot of detox happens, and that can be kind of an analogy to to what you're saying, as far as swimming in dirty water and then coming into very, very pure water. Uh, if you've ever bought a goldfish and you, you take it out of that water at Walmart or wherever you're getting it, and then you put it in really clean, beautiful water, well, you see it just, it's kind of stunned for a little bit, you know, and it's taking in that new that new resource and it's adjusting to it and, uh, you know, and things like that. But with the Kundalini, though, you, you get the actual pain of, well, I, I like what you said as far as uh, density because, the density of the body will respond in a tactile way to the kundalini coming into it, and and uh, and and that can come out, you know, in a painful way, just like teething, and and that ties right in to what we were saying about yoga and how yoga, being from the kundalini, prepares a person to have the kundalini in a less painful format. But you know, let's you know when we segue right into the emotional. Well, Emotional yoga is also important. And emotional yoga, i.e. forgiveness, tolerance, patience, trust, love, uh, uh, kindness, consideration, these are the emotions, the emotional yogas of the heart. And uh, this also has a way of finding amelioration for the pain. And I know uh, Amelia loves when I use the word amelioration so <laughs> well, of course <laughs> <laughs> so yeah well right on target my friend as always <laughs> i just want to make an announcement that uh i will be blessed to to meet face to face with Foschi at uh elizabeth dalton gonzalez's uh kundalini at mancresa castle in Washington State. Yes! <laughs> that means so will I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be an honor. <laughs> and uh, we're going to make some videos. We're going to make some videos of Ashki talking about his experiences and talking about his uh, his Kundalini awakening. And you know, Ashki and I have been communicating for over seven years now. With I mean, I remember him when when he was just a young. Young man. <laughs> <laughs> there was hardly any time in his West. <laughs> back, back in his 30s, you know. 
<laughs> may yeah, yeah. may I just uh, <laughs> uh huh? Last year you've been what? on this this you've been on this track for quite a while, and uh, you, uh. you came out of a out of a system that it's almost a perfect segue into the community. Yes. You came from a belief system that was really uh, very very strongly practicing astral projection. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm, to the point mm-hmm. of soul travel as well, charting, mm-hmm. charting mm-hmm. the astral mm-hmm. in certain ways, like level fifty-three, level seventeen, that type of thing, and exactly. and uh, mm-hmm. at what a perfect segue into Kundalini that has been for you, and a perfect way for you to to go from from the belief system into the freedom to have the Kundalini, and, and as you know, talking about experiencing the pain. Um, you know, the the pain of that separation was also the birthing pain of your invitation mm-hmm. to Kundalini. Do you, you see what I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. I was just thinking, as you said, that, you know, my, my initial uh, activation was top-down, and I, I see that, uh, that organization uh, or teaching that I was involved with was top-oriented. Well, everyone uh, with good sense knows that you have to have a good foundation in order for the the top or uh, upper part to make sense, make complete sense. Uh, and so it wasn't until I, I came into these teachings with you, uh, Chrism, that it started to make complete sense. I, I even think that after one of the uh, Shakti parts, I, I said, I'm, I, I mentioned I'm complete now, I'm whole now, which meant that I, I realized that I needed very, very, very importantly the activation uh, or, or the awakening of the Kundalini from the the base to the crown uh, as it is normal, uh, and so I, I felt a, 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 a sense of being complete um, after this experience. Well, it's uh, you know, you know, and and it, it it's really. Uh you look at it from a from a uh, you know outside of your situation from far back, and you can see that in your case, A plus B does equal C. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know you did need to go through that other belief system in order to to learn what you learned there, in order to have that segue into the Kundalini. And, and I think even with with uh, with uh, Santara and, and Catholicism, a very similar scenario, wouldn't you say, Amelia? Absolutely, Kruzan, absolutely, 100%. Yeah, so, so I, I, you know, I, I really want to, to underscore for people that are listening right now that your previous life has had things that you needed to learn, lessons, educations that you needed to have so that you could come into this grace that you're coming into uh, with those those educations intact that you may draw on that experience, draw mm-hmm. on whether it be devotion, whether it be astral projection, whatever it may be, uh, the Kundalini knows you and it knows your history and it knows your karma and it will adjudicate uh, the levels of karmic dispensation that you may be having along the lines of the educations that it has arranged for you to have. And Basti, I just want to I just want to say thank you for your for being an administrator on the uh, the Facebook groups. It's an honor. Well, Santara, I'd like to thank you as well. I mean, it's very important to have Kundalini awake people working with with the early uh, Kundalini awakened uh, uh, membership. It's very very important. We're getting about a hundred people a week signing up on that group. So if that gives any of you that are listening to this more permission to listen, then please do and, and, and sign up on that group and partake of a Kundalini community. And this reminds me, Julie and I have been traveling all over the place up here in Northern California. We we checked out Dome Living, which is basically living inside of a geodesic dome. They come in in sizes from, from 16 feet, 23 feet, all the way up to 120 feet and more. And if you're interested in joining in a Kundalini community, which we are setting up, we have an investor who is ready to to uh, 
to uh, invest uh, over $300,000 into land and into uh, uh, the different media that it takes to, to uh, set up a, a community, I, tractors and, and uh, you know, domes and, uh, you know, all the infrastructure that we would need to have a happy, healthy, productive, Kundalini Awakened community. I would like you to, to join the Kundalini Radiance group, which is on Facebook right now, and or you can contact myself, uh, Chrisom, uh, and my my uh, email is k f i r e f o r a l l at yahoo dot com. That's k fire for all and uh, at yahoo dot com. And so, really, this is starting to take off. Uh, we will be we will be placing ourselves into uh, into a very very beautiful environment that has that has clean running spring water that has beautiful, beautiful, stupendous uh, attraction, energetic attraction to the kundalini. Pine trees are a very strong energetic attraction for the kundalini. And so I would invite everybody to that, that wants to participate in this type of a thing to, to join up and, and, and take a hand in, in the organization and the, uh, the, uh, the implementation of such an amazing community of people of enlightened people. This is a big deal, folks. This is the only one that I know of outside of, uh, of Shangri-La, uh, somewhere in the depths of Nepal and the Himalayas. We're not hiding. We're not hiding. We're out there. We're ready to embrace the divine within us. and We're, at, we're ready to live that embrace. And so I just want to say thank, thank you again, uh, Fashji, for, for coming on and, and uh, giving uh, an excellent teaching. And, and let everybody be advised, these are the levels of teaching that Fashji will be giving uh, when we see him in Washington State at Elizabeth Dalton Gonzalez's uh, seminar at Man, Manresa Castle, Kundalini at the Castle, May 9th. Uh, coming right up, however, it is... Kundalini in the beautiful Twin Cities of uh, Minnesota. And I'm going to bring Rosemary on. There she is. Your Holiness. Yes, sir. Here I am. Before you say anything, I'd like to introduce you. This is Rosemary Goliath. Rosemary has been a nun for over 25 years, a Catholic sister uh, in the order of some strange name or saint or something. Well, not a Carmelite, because I don't think Rosemary really likes Carmels that much. But uh, but definitely a, a mother superior of the highest order. And uh, she has an announcement for you. Well, Her first well, announcement was the well, life well, as a sister was quite a number of years ago. That was my early years. I don't currently... I live that lifestyle in my home, however, with my what, prayer and what I've learned. So thank you. Thank what, you, what our teacher. What kind of a problem do you have with caramels? Um, just what you said. I don't eat caramel, but the caramelite is, was from the place caramel. That's diet That's caramel. The, diet caramel? Yeah. yeah. See, Teresa of Avila was a caramelite, and she certainly was a kundalini woman. Definitely. She started the Carmelites, didn't she? No, she reformed them. That was part of her work that uh, I think Kundalini asked her to do, and it was difficult. She took on the church. She took on the local um, town, the leadership, and she transformed her, reformed her community. So she's a a foundress in in a particular sense. Very cool. It's just like... Just like you, my dear, and the community that you are sustaining within uh, the uh, the Twin Cities area of Minnesota. So I tip my hat to you, Rosemary. Please, thank you. Please continue with your announcement. Well, thank you. And uh, tomorrow I will be telling what's yours to tell, but I will be picking up our teacher at the airport here in Minnesota. He will be with us uh, till the 23rd, and that uh, main 
main reason for coming is the seminar 21 and 22. And if you have the slightest interest in it, please follow that. Follow your guidance. Um, and my uh, information is rosemaryg at usinternet.com and uh, 651-452-3161. I'm always happy to talk with somebody uh, about this. And also, what uh, for those of you who are listening locally, Kristen will be speaking at the Healthy Living Expo in Minneapolis on Saturday and Sunday at 1 o'clock. And that is really a, a, just an amazing thing. I'm very excited about that, of the possibilities. And our community here will be assisting with, uh, with what there is in the booth. And we're looking forward to greeting lots of people. Thank you for the inspiration. Our teacher. Well, thank you, thank you, Rosemary, for organizing this. I mean, uh, Rosemary is 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 the the lead uh, individual with regards to the uh, Minnesota seminar, but also the expo. The the, the people that run the expo uh, met her and uh, and, uh, and and said that this might be a good thing for us to participate in. And whoa, here we go. We're we're all ready to go. I, I might even be bringing my my special Shakti PA. Uh, a public address system uh, that the Kundalini gave me bliss when I was even I was kind of coerced into into getting it, and because uh, I I would never have bought a PA without having that type of a of a guidance with it, and so not only was the is the PA a gift of the Kundalini, but so is the the, the microphone that's coming through, and so yeah yeah very excited to be going to Minnesota tomorrow in the a.m., 5 a.m., and yes, Santara, hello, my dear. Hi, well, blessings to Rosemary and to you and, and Julia with the travel and with your time in Minnesota, Quizzle. There's a message from Elizabeth, if I can give it now, in relation to her seminar. She's just asking if people are listening and they know that you know they're coming to the seminar in Washington, then the hotel must have reservations made and she needs numbers so if you know you're coming she would ask you that you contact her and let her know that so she can book the reservations the amount of rooms that are needed at the hotel if uh, people don't know, contact her coming. i'm coming elizabeth i'm coming and, <laughs> and i yes I, I don't need a big space just you know a closet yeah well Sorry. i think she knows that <laughs> And she knows I'm coming and Rosemary, we've booked our rooms, but but I think it's important. I understand where she's coming from because sometimes people know that they're coming, but they forget that the person who's organizing it needs the information in order to follow through on what they're doing at that side. So just a consideration. Julia's coming, and I believe Eileen is coming. Yes. And and, uh, so, yeah, yeah, there's at least four or five of us coming. So that's enough to fill up a castle, isn't it? I'm fast, G, remember? Fast, <laughs> G? <laughs> yes. So, okay, Chris, okay. our hour but is gone. Our hour our has hour passed, gone. and I think yes. you have yes. things to do. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Um, uh, remember, we, we have a seminar in the beautiful Twin Cities area of Minnesota. This will be happening uh, uh, on the 22nd and 23rd, right? 21st and 22nd, sorry, 21st and 22nd. We're also at the Expo, the Healthy Living Expo in uh, uh, St. Paul, I believe. And uh, please look us up. Please uh, come by and say hello. I want to say thank you to Rosemary and Eileen and Santara and Fashji and Julia for, for, yes? Just to say, Elizabeth has 21 people coming to the seminar so far. <laughs> 21, 21, and oh, wonderful. Nice Elizabeth. number. Um, I would like everybody to know that uh, if I, if you see me in your dreams, just to say hello and just pay attention to what the Kundalini wants you to know and act on it. Don't be afraid. Remember, it's not just your imagination. You're having a real uh, vision come to you and give you instruction. I want to thank everybody who is listening in the archives. Hello, you future people. And thank you, uh, everyone, 
for joining us in this wonderful broadcast of uh, conversations uh, in the Kundalini. And even as an adult, and let's just say that you were raised well and and, and uh, you, you learned how important it is to be polite and to have manners and to treat people well and be kind and considerate and listening, uh, when the Kundalini comes and you get that spike in your emotional body, well, you're not prepared for that. You're not prepared for having such a hot emotional trigger to any kind of a, of a uh, interaction that involves your emotions. And so be very, very, very aware of this as you go into your Kundalini. For those of you that are looking at Kundalini, look at your emotional balances as much as you look for the physical phenomena that will accompany the Kundalini because it's not to be taken lightly. Your emotions in many ways can can rule your your Kundalini experience. And if your emotions, you know, go bad on you, when your if your emotions go bad on you, then it doesn't really your your enjoyment of the physical phenomena goes right out the window. So really, really pay attention to your emotional responses inside the Kundalini. I don't care if you're a politician running for office. You know that's just you know that kind of a star chamber is all about having emotional control and and learning how to get your point of view across without. Uh, you know, going into, say, a 12-year-old mentality. Uh, or if you're a boss at a big company, you know, just because you're at the top doesn't mean you can be an emotional idiot. You know I'm talking to you. Now, watch your emotions. <laughs> the scenario is the emotions are very, very uh, essential and a very, very key ingredient to having the... Uh, the kundalini in a, in a safe and balanced way. You really need to understand that. Get your head around that. Get your heart around that. And begin to self-modulate how you respond emotionally to anyone. Okay. Um, do you always have to be right? Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you, uh, guest number... Oh, that's a long number. 116. 77492 they're telling me that I can be heard all right and thank you very much for that for that confirmation it's very very nice of you uh so so you know do you always have to be right how do you feel when someone contradicts you how do you feel and what does how does that amplification the kundalini brings how does that make you feel even more along an emotional line of of understanding so it's very important for you to begin to take stock of that you know, um, with Kundalini people, it's very easy to fly off into a rage. Uh, you know, uh, you know, on the freeway, or or because uh, you know your country's leaders aren't taking you in a in a in a direction that is healthy. You know, like here in the United States, uh, it can get you very very you know riled up. And I want you to really just take a breath through your nose. Take a deep breath through your nose about three times and just let the tension go. Let yourself relax. You know, you don't need the high blood pressure. You don't need the elevated heart rate just because, you know, this is a new area of emotional exploration for you to have. It's it's absolutely natural. The emotions really... You know, this is where your compassion comes from. This is where your consideration comes from. This is where the blessings of love are emanated into those around you. This has a very strong uh, influence on the quality of your kundalini radiance. Remember that I've spoken in other shows, this, this almost a mile circular square footprint that a kundalini, awakened kundalini radiance can cover. All of the living beings within that radiance will feel the quality of that radiance. That includes the plants, the microbes, the fungi, the people, the animals, the insects, the birds, the fish, the everything, everything. And and even, even qualities of consciousness that we have yet to discover as being actual creations because we can't measure it, such as uh, those that are in the in the air and in the sky around us. And so... You know, I can't speak highly enough 
about how important it is to have emotional stability while you're having the kundalini. And, and uh, remember, you may have had a hard time of it as a kid. You may have been, uh, you may have been abused physically, sexually, emotionally, mentally. I mean, you may have suffered all kinds of different levels of abuse, certainly within the, within the realm of karmic uh, balancing. And, and some of these trigger points may still be very, very hot-button issues with you. Uh, certainly with, uh, you know, if you were really, really traumatized as a kid, you know, you've, you're, com you're compartmentalizing your soul in a, in a shamanic term. You have a, a, a soul fracture uh, that, that is, you know, it's causing a disturbance in your energetic understanding of how you are. And so, once again, you need to go in there and you need to find that, that, that child that you were. And you need to, to bring that child back into a harmonic convergence, shall we say, with your kundalini radiance. And one of the ways you do this, one of the ways you do this is you go into a meditation, and if you're going to use a shamanic journeying point, you'll, you'll look, so you, I'm just going to give you this, this technique right off the bat. You go into meditation, a soft, gentle meditation. Imagine that you're sitting on a log somewhere. It can be in a meadow, it can be on on the beach, it can be in a desert, it can be in your backyard. And I want you to turn, when you get the feeling, you'll, you'll get the feeling and you'll turn, let's just go that, that cable car, and uh, we were walking towards the wharf, and it was kind of a dark, kind of a dark area, and I would not have allowed her to walk there alone, uh, but I was there, and so I didn't see any problem with it. And, and we crossed the street to a corner, and all of a sudden, a figure emerges from the from the corner and confronts us. And, oh, I'm going to get bliss. Oh, hang on, hang on. Oh, wow. Wow. It, it's hard to talk about this without going into bliss. And I can't talk when I'm in bliss. <laughs> Maybe I should talk about this. A figure came up, and it was Christ. It was the Christ. And uh, Magdalene was immediately instructed to get onto her knees and to give give a gift uh, to this figure from her hand to its hand. And, and she did. And, and it was very, very, it was a beautiful, beautiful, amazingly gorgeous. As, I can't tell you how strong a moment it was. Uh, but it wasn't strong in the way that you would think because the Christ the Christ doesn't come in all lit up and, you know, fluorescent and, you know, f surrounded by 21 angels that are like little kids, you know. It's just like Christ just kind of shows up looking like a regular person. But you can feel the energetic signature of this being and, and oh. Hang on. I shouldn't talk about these things because I just can't. Okay. <sighs> anyway, so so yeah, the light of Christ is basically the radiance of the Kundalini that is around Kundalini people. The, the, it's just a stronger form. Christ wants everyone to have their kundalini awakened. Uh, ask uh, uh, ask St. Teresa of Avila. Ask St. John of the Cross. Ask St. Francis of Easy. Ask St. Hildegard of Bingham. You know, these people all saw Christ that way. Okay, Christ is not, in our, in our modern, shall we say modern, in our different uh, uh, time zone, in our, in our different level of uh, physical manifestation of what we call technology. At, at our core, we are still beings that are searching to discover our own divinity. And this is what the Christ wants to see happen. This is not the first time Christ has, has exposed itself to, my, to any of my students. It's, it happens again and again. And it's still, it's very, it's, it's the same level of power over and over and over and over. It's just like it happened the first time. 
anyway, so the, the, the light of the Christ is a, is a big deal. It is that light of God. It is that light of grace. A lot of people go, oh, well, is that the Holy Ghost? Well, I, you know, there are so many different definitions of the Holy Ghost. You pick one. But I can tell you that the light that emanates from the radiance of Christ is both visible and in the invisible spectrum or the non-visible uh, visible spectrum. Uh, it is both seen and felt and experienced in layers of, of duality and non-duality at the same time. And I know that doesn't make sense to people who don't understand walking the edge of the Tao. Okay, but Christ is of this time and not of this time. Uh, it, he, Christ, the Christ force itself is an amazingly beautiful force that has been so completely misunderstood by the many... Uh, by the many uh, <laughs> Fasci, I'm going to read what Fasci just wrote on the chat room. He goes, Tristan, I would like you not to project so much bliss. I'm having a hard time over here. <laughs> Blessings to you, Fasci, and anybody else that may be having the bliss. It's really strong. It's really strong. Um, yeah, the Christ force has been clearly misunderstood. Uh, by the, the many different denominations of Christianity and by the ne many different uh, uh, interpretations and, and uh, uh, personal agendas that have been injected into the teachings of the Christ. And so, but the Christ light really is all about the Kundalini. It is the same level of radiance that Santara has, that, that Vashti has, that I have, that Julia has, that Magdalene has, that... Uh, Elizabeth, Dalton Gonzalez, M.J. Henderson, everybody that has a kundalini has a level of Christ light around them. You, you don't have to call it the Christ light. Though the Christ is not all about, oh, you must exalt me, or oh, you know, uh, Christ isn't really out. You know, he, Christ is not about uh, 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 self-aggrandizement. That's what people do to him. Christ doesn't need that. Only people need that. Uh, but the same thing with the Buddhic, with, with Buddha. Buddha will come to people that way. Zoroastria will come to people that way. Some of the Egyptian gods and goddesses will come to people that way. Uh, uh, the white Tara will come to people that way. Green Tara will come to people that way. Uh, you know, this, this is the way that the divine teaches us to come into itself. It will make these, these appearances. And you just don't want to make the mistake that, that most people in the United States... Uh... Hello, everyone. Welcome to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um... Uh, my name is Chrisom, and I would like to welcome you to this program. Joining me today, once again, we are so blessed and we are so fortunate to have Julia Rainier here. And say hello, Julia. Hi, everybody. I hope you could hear that. She seems kind of soft-spoken when it comes to the radio. And I would like to also welcome the queen, I should say the Celtic queen, of questionable comfort, Her Holiness, Amelia Santara. Woohoo! <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good to be here. Hello, Julia. I hear you very well. Um, it's good to be here, Chris. I'm looking forward to the show. Um, I'll begin, as I always do, by letting listeners know where they can go if they would like to make a donation. The place is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com and on the upper right hand corner you will see the donate button and as I always say it's very easy to follow the instructions after that. If anybody is interested in making a donation in some other way then they can get in contact with me at 
kundalini matters at gmail.com and I can let them know um, how to make a donation through the bank. Again, we always say every week that there is, you know, no absolute requirement. There's no expectation on anybody to make a donation. I simply give this information because people um, want to know where they can give a donation to help support the work that Chrism does. This is Chrism's full-time work. He works at this all the time, um, except when he sleeps. And so, yes, donations are necessary. Um, so people who are in a position to do that and people who want to do that, donations are very, very welcome indeed. So you can go again. I'll tell you it again. It's Ascension, wwwascension kundalini.blogspot.com. And if you don't have a bio and you just Google um, Ascension Kundalini Blogspot, you will get the address that way. So that's it, Chrism. Though that's the only notification I have, and um, looking forward to the show. I have some questions as well. If you want to ask them later on. Well, it's interesting. Uh, once again, um, uh, welcome to everyone. It looks like we might be having another sound problem. Uh, oh. People in the forum, people aren't being able to hear. So uh, MJ and Fast G and Elizabeth and anybody else. Uh, let us know would. I'll type a message because they obviously can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> Two minutes, let me go do that. Okay, very good. So, even though they may not be able to hear what we're saying, they, the blog talk is still recording. And so, I just want to say to everyone out there, uh, especially for those of you listening in the archives, <clears throat> and listening uh, on your computer, uh, yeah, it, it's it's recording. And so here we go. Uh, Kundalini can bring about uh, very, very specific changes in a person's temperament. Uh, you can go from zero to infuriated in less than a nanosecond. And it's very important for you to understand the the level of emotional balance that it takes uh, for people to have Kundalini without flying off the handle, uh, as I'm as I drive around the country with Julia in the car, you know, the the Kundalini will come up with certain levels of testing for her to go through w with regards to an emotional content. How do you handle somebody who's directly challenging you? How do you handle uh, someone who's challenging you and say not the best way? Uh, this is a very very important aspect because it will. It can, it can engineer how you are heard and how you hear yourself within the context of just communication with your family, your friends, your job, perfect strangers. You need to understand that the kundalini is amplifying not just your physical body, but also the emotional body and the mental body and the spiritual body and the egoic or the psychological body. So it's very important for you to understand how to temper your emotional drives, your emotional content. And and I gotta say that this is not this is not something that we learn so well in the West, in the Western uh, technological countries. Uh, you know, of course, we learn from our parents at home: don't hit, don't hit your sister, don't hit your friend, don't. Don't be rude or things like that. But once we get past the age of 12 or once once perhaps we leave the, the nest or the home, uh, we're basically, you know, allowed to express ourselves any way we wish. And if we haven't received the information very well as a child, then we're certainly going to be expressing along the lines of, of, of childish behavior, uh, you know, in our, in our young adults, let's say in our late teens and 20s. And if the kundalini comes up uh, during that time period, which it sometimes does for people, it's very, very important to be able to to regain emotional stability while you're having you. And, uh, and so this will be an hour show. And, and my apologies to anybody that was hoping it, that, it, that it might be a longer show. I apologize, but I, I do have to, to, to get my gear together. Um, 
If you would like to talk about this, uh, please call in, area code 347-934-0026. Just a quick quick aside here. Anybody that wants more information, you can go to the YouTube channel, chrisum.kundalini, and that will give you all of our 300 videos on YouTube. You can also go to Kundalini Awakening Systems 1, that's the number one, dot com. You can go on to the Yahoo network, and it's Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 at Yahoo Groups, uh, dot com. And then we can also be found on Facebook at Kundalini Awakening exclamation point and Kundalini Awakening Systems 2 or 3, uh, Kundalini Healing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are also on Google Plus, I believe they call it, which I don't know how to operate, but I'll, I'm, I'm, yeah, Google Plus. We have a group there, and we we can also be reached there. So any any of these areas that people need to explore with regards to their Kundalini, I remember in my early process, I couldn't find any information about the Kundalini. This is, my kundalini is really what sculpted my mission in life. Uh, you know, when I when I awoke, uh, first of all, I came into this body with pre-awakened from another lifetime of having kundalini. But that doesn't mean you get to remember the lifetime like many people think. That just means that you come in and you have kundalini phenomena and you don't know why. Okay, it, it and that phenomena will drive you towards the second awakening, at least for the soul, but maybe the first awakening for that flesh body. And so when the flesh body was awakened at the age of 30, I had no clue what was going on. I mean, I, I remember my childhood, and I got a lot of this, you know, this, the phenomena, symptoms from my childhood, and that was okay. You know, I, le- I, I learned to get used to that. But, you know, the snake being in the spine, you know, your spine turning into a serpent, seeing all these serpents around you, having serpents, uh, you know, land on your feet or butterflies land on your shoulders or birds land on your hand. And that was just kind of weird. I mean, great. I loved it. You know, I felt very honored and blessed, but I couldn't find any information about this back then. There was no Internet and cell phones were still new, if that tells you how old I am. Uh, So, you know, my 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 course in life got shifted from from where it was to where it is right now. And that shift has been towards giving people uh, honest, clear, uh, integrity-based information about the Kundalini Awakening without the baggage of religion, you know, without the baggage of a, a you know, any kind of a specific belief system. Because one, as I said in other in other uh, programs, where the where religions end, that's where Kundalini begins. And I know. But some of you who are interested in the Vedic areas, uh, that's a little harder because the Vedic does include uh, opinions about the Kundalini, but not within a Western civilization context. And this is where it can really go wrong. You know, it it almost seems like you have to become a Hindu in order to understand Vedic-based information systems about the Kundalini. And, And I'm telling you right now, you don't. You know, I'm sitting here in Northern California with a beautiful lovely Julia Rainier from Minnesota. You know, she's got a Tibetan Buddhism background, but she's also got a Christian background. None of them are Hindu-based. You know, she gets a Shakti pot at, our, at, our, at the seminar we did in, in, in Minnesota last time, and all of a sudden she starts chanting Hindu chants. So you know where she was before this body. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, the Vedic information is good, but it's not the only source of information. For instance, the Taoists in China really understand uh, the Kundalini. They they understand it, but they don't understand it to the point where they can really ascend with it. They they try to control it at every step of the way. And once again, you know, I'm 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 far more. Uh, I feel it's far more productive to surrender your life to the Kundalini and let the divine guide you, as I have let it guide me. Into, into what the new life choices can bring for you. Uh, if you'd like to talk about this, I'd like to talk with you about this. The number is 347-934-0026. And if Her Holiness, the greatness of Ireland, the I in the Ireland, the R 
in the Ireland. If Her Holiness would come on board, I believe she has some questions that, that she would like to ask. Uh, or she could be sitting on the toilet at this moment. Ah! <laughs> You, did you write? Just got back. Just got back. No, no. Um, um, yes, I have. I have a few questions for them. Um, two have been written in that are not as a group. So one of them is: people talk about the light of Christ. Is there any connection between this and Kundalini? Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. Uh, I, just a little while ago, I had a, uh, one of my French students with me, uh, Magdalene de Deus. And uh, we were traveling all over the country. We were traveling overseas. And she was doing, you know, very similar to what Julia is doing right now. And and we visited inadvertently. I, I had to get a T-shirt uh, for for uh, the kids of, of, of one of my students. And, and uh, so I was, I was, I, I, we were there in San Francisco. Uh, we had just got off the Mason Street cable car, you know, Rice Roni, the San Francisco, to your left, you'll turn to your left, and you'll just look at the first animal that you see there. I don't care if it's a grasshopper, a praying mantis, a jackrabbit, a deer, a tiger, a wolf, orca, heron, eagle, doesn't matter. That is the spirit animal that can help you uh, find uh, your soul fragment. And as you find, as you see that animal, just say, I you know, because I have Lasha here, I'll just say, you know, I see Lasha over there. So Lasha becomes my spirit animal in the, in, in the shamanic quest to retrieve a, uh, a, uh, a soul fracture. So I, I ask Lasha, I say, Lasha, go into the three worlds, the world of the heavens, the world of, of the treasures, and the world of, of the, the lower worlds. So basically, you have a trinity of worlds, and hello, trinity, kundalini, it goes right there with us. The shamanism and kundalini go hand in hand. Uh, so I'd say, Lasha, Lasha, uh, please find my soul fragment. Please find, <laughs> not quite getting what that is you're saying there, but okay. Please find the part of me that is that is causing emotional imbalance uh, uh, from any time in my previous existence and. And Lasha will basically bring that soul, that soul up. It will, it'll, she'll either bring that soul up or she'll take you to where that soul is. And then you have to coax that, that child fragment uh, to you and, 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 and let it know that it's safe and let it know that it's loved and let it know that the abuse that it had will not be repeated and that it's okay to come back and rejoin the whole body as a as a an accepted working member of that whole body, and uh, and when you do that, boom, that soul fragment has been rejoined with your energetic anatomy. It's very very important for people to do this. Now you don't need a shaman to do this. Now if you're possessed with entities, that's going to be a different kind of a problem for you, and and I'll get into that in a second. But if you're just beginning to come into the kundalini, if you're just beginning to look at uh, where your emotional blockages may be with regards to having an amplified emotional body, uh, it's very important for you to to look into this. And this is a this is a self psychological uh, uh, healing modality that you can use sitting right there in your living room, your bedroom, your kitchen, your office, your desk, your car, wherever you're hearing this. You can just go into that soft meditation, wait, and, and you'll just kind of get the feeling when to turn your head to the left, to the left. And then whatever animal you see there, and it won't be a person. You see a person, that's, that's more of an entity interference. You just want to ignore that. Whatever animal you see, I don't care if it's a snail, a slug, an ant, you know, these Creatures do not have the same meaning in this state as they do uh, um, in a terrestrial or, 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 or worldly way. Okay, so you turn your head, you look at that animal. I see Lasha. Um, and then you ask Lasha to find a soul fragment that is blocking your emotional uh, balance right now in your lifetime right now. And then she'll either take you 
to that soul fragment and and uh, that soul fragment you can question you can you know what happened to you oh i see oh my gosh you know well that's not going to happen to you anymore i want you to know that i love you that i will take care of you that you're safe with me do not be afraid open and 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 come come into us and let us be friends again and let us be together again and and uh, once that happens once that rejoining occurs uh, you'll find in most cases that the blockage that uh, that has accompanied you throughout your entire life is now gone. And the Kundalini will fill in those blank spaces with its own grace. And uh, and you will once again have balance within within that measure of your emotional uh, anatomy. So so take Take this advice. Take this clearly. This is very, very basic uh, soul retrieval technique. It's, you know, and the, you know, a lot of people go, "Oh gosh, I got to pay the shaman a thousand dollars in order to." That was not me, and I have not eaten at Taco Bell. I swear. <laughs> That's some guy on a motorcycle running by here. Okay, so. Oh, what was I saying when with that grounding? Um, yeah, this. You don't need to pay a shaman a thousand dollars to do this. Uh, you don't need to to uh, pay anybody to do this. This is something you can do for yourself. Granted, you know the the shaman might give you some tobacco smoke and some sage and rattles and you know put you in a teepee or some sort of a hut. You know that you know the surroundings might help you. And if that helps you, fine. That's all good. Also, if you're taking ayahuasca, ayahuasca will also identify these areas for you. Uh, taking you to these areas of blockage where you can find resolution. Uh, another possibility is just if you already have the Kundalini flowing, you can just ask the Kundalini. And in many ways, you can just go into levels of forgiveness. You forgive those who committed abuse against you, emotional abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, mental abuse, any of the abuses that many, many children uh, encounter. Uh, you can go into into the Kundalini itself and ask it. To, to help you unblock that abusive, that abusive blockage. Now, if you have any questions about this, I have to tell you that this is, this, today's show is going to be an abbreviated show because I have to pack for Minnesota. I'm leaving for Minnesota tomorrow at 5 in the morning. And so Julie and I have a lot of packing to do. 